Batman the Night. This is issue two, and it's Chip Zarsky writing with Carmine DJ Domenico on the art, and it's uh, not much of a time jump. It's Bruce quite soon after. He's in Paris. It's ultimately how he's going to meet Descartes uh, by the end of the issue, but mm-hmm. it's his time with an older thief, uh, thief who is obviously kind of like a prototype for Catwoman in a, in a Catwoman lot of ways. Catwoman 0.5. Yeah. Um, but this is one who's older than him, who's, you know, middle-aged, and he's, you know, like 19 or whatever he's meant to be right now. He can't be older than 20, surely. No, nah, I wouldn't right. have thought so. So he is this younger man, uh, which is why later on in the story when he kisses her and she's like, ah, oh, I mean, I'm tempted, but, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm like pushing 50 or whatever she's meant to be. Uh, so... Um, she stole his heart. Yeah. So that, that's definitely felt different from the first issue because this was more of a straight mm-hmm. story that just sort of went sequentially. Uh, yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed this one a lot more. Um, and and also reading, I started uh, Zadarcy's Daredevil, right? So I started reading that. Yes. Um, and there is some, I can tell the stylings. And it's not just because, you know, Batman, Daredevil. But this no. one feels much more like a Zadarsky issue uh, with that Daredevil and some of the other stuff I've read, like the, the Red Hood story in, in Urban Legends mm-hmm. uh, that he did. So I'm much more in on this issue than I was on the first one. I mean, I was pretty in on it already, but mm-hmm. I, yeah, I'm a big fan of this issue as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was. I went for a bit of a weird mixed emotion at first because it, it, when it started off and I, it's, it, it, it became clear it was just going to be more of a straightforward issue. At first, I was like, "Oh, I don't know if this is like doing as as many unique things with this like sort of part of his origin, mm-hmm. and maybe I'm less interested because of that." But then as it went on and it sort of like got to, you know, further beats in the story, I was like, okay, I'm kind of digging kind of like what it's doing here with him. him and then the, the box of teeth at the end. Yeah, and it, but him realizing that he is, like, he has to learn from criminals to be the best. Because, I mean, if there's one thing I don't like in this issue, there's a line of dialogue near the start. I practice fencing for two weeks and, and bet the best fencer after that. I mean, he's a Mary Sue. What do you want? Yeah, that, that, that's my problem with it. It's like, I'm okay with, with Bruce learning to do really tough things and becoming the best at everything, but I don't like the implication that he is able to do any of it easily. Like, it should, it well, should... no, it gives him it gives him a superpower. I and, mean... you know, like, he has super learning. Uh... <laughs> the, the idea that Bruce went away for a handful of years and came back the best at everything is already a bit, like, yeah. If, plays it to the he's, he's always well, that's, there too but that's where like I, I complain about ghostmaker a lot right but i feel like that's what ghostmaker kind of is mocking as is now you have another one that's like that so it doesn't make bruce special i'm right? just there's almost like people but, uh, that can... uh, you keep it vague enough that it doesn't matter though like you like this, no, but... this was just so specific i it took me two weeks to become the best fencer in the world yeah. like <laughs> like yeah, no. yeah, yeah no i understand that I also like that in this issue, it starts with him almost having this cockiness to where as he's trying to learn how to be a thief, it's so counter to who Bruce Wayne is on the inside. He has a hard time adapting to it. You know, he's not instantly good at it. And that's where some of the some of the conflict comes from. Uh, and I so I do enjoy that aspect of it. But. But yeah, two weeks to become the world's best fencer. It made me roll my eyes. Yeah, I, I just there's, you know? there's something I'd rather didn't do. You, I think you can get the the general idea of him becoming like some of the best at some things without definitively stating that he is the literal best at these things. Uh, it's you know there's something I rather didn't do. Uh, but yeah, he runs into this cat thief, this cat burglar. Uh, not not a thief of cats. To, to be yeah, no. Yes, that's the other one. Yes. Uh, yes, the Grey Shadow, and encounters her, and she bests him, you know, she's able to get away, and this frustrates him, and she's so fascinated by him that she intentionally comes to see him the next day, she knows who he is, comes in, you know, when he's out having coffee or whatever, and basically says, hey, you, you want to learn how to catch me? Well, I can teach you how to do that, uh, and invites him to come along that night, and it starts this relationship of them, basically it's him being trained by her to you know, be stealthy, to get into places unnoticed, to break alarms, all things that are going to be useful as Batman. I mean, that's the thing. Like, everything she's describing, everything he's describing, his narration about learning, it's like, oh, yeah, this is all Batman stuff. Like, he needs to yeah, know how to do all there's this. There's a point where he acknowledges, like, Joe, I don't really want to be a criminal. I don't want to work with these people. But these skills, these are what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be breaking into place. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be trespassing. 
I am essentially going to be a criminal. Yeah. Uh, and we're interested the card separately. There's a like a murder that happens. Uh, this killer yeah, is going to He's basically Sherlock Holmes. Yeah, he's, he's called in to called in to yeah. advise. Yeah. Well, because there's a, a the it opens with this serial killer roaming around uh, Paris, and this is who um, Ducard's called in to help with. Yeah, um, the serial killer in this case, he kills entire families, barring one child. Like he'll mm-hmm. always leave one child alive, usually the yeah. youngest. But yeah. so, so it's quite brutal. It's a brutal, like you know, series of murders that's happening in the mm-hmm. city, and uh, the cards on the case seemingly, uh, and this comes back in at the end when uh, somehow it's led them across the path of of uh, Bruce and Grey Ghost, uh, probably related to the teeth in the box. I I, I suspect, yeah, uh, because that's they seem to maybe have stolen from the killer. It would seem, but yes. um, yeah. So yeah, we get like a montage, of, uh, you know them practicing and training and she's like now tonight we actually go steal something uh and it doesn't go very well police show up uh bruce gets shot in the leg and part of me thought oh maybe she's going to ditch him and like oh she doesn't Mm -hmm. actually care about that much but she does no she like you know picks him up Mm -hmm. takes him to safety it goes out of its way to show that yes she's a a thief and a criminal and but she's not like a a terrible person she's yeah she's a thief but not a villain yeah right like she steals stuff and they but even point out uh, early on she's got a bit of a Robin Hood thing going as well, where she yeah. gives a lot of it back to the, the and poor. He does call her, goes, yeah, yeah, but you're wearing some real expensive stuff yeah. there. You, you ain't <laughs> yeah. giving it all away. Yes. She's like, yeah, I have, I have taste. Yeah. Know? yeah. I mean, I suppose if she's giving half to people who need it, then keeping half to be rich, I mean... Mm-hmm. Uh, it's still suppose. a net benefit, I suppose, overall yeah. for people. Yeah. Um, At least she's not claiming it's a charity and then driving a Lamborghini. So yeah, so it's when they're pat- patching up, yeah, you know, she's uh, stitching up his leg, that she ends up kissing him. Uh, or sorry, he ends up kissing her, I should say. And mm-hmm. she kind of pulls away and isn't, like, you know, uncomfortable by it and even, like, comments to herself that she, she kind of wishes that she was younger, so she... Ah, well, that's that's the French for you. Uh, <laughs> feel going for it. Yeah. But part of me thought they were maybe going to do a thing here where she did actually kind of go along and have a fling with him and it'd be mm-hmm. kind of his, uh, you know, his coming-of-age fling with this older woman. Uh, um, that'll, that'll happen later in the book. It may still happen, yeah. Uh but yeah, there's a secret compartment in the box they stole that has all these uh, teeth popping out. Uh, but the big cliffhanger is that the card is there. He has her at gun. You know, he's got her as a sort of shield and is pointing the gun at both of them. And uh, there you go. So this is how he meets the card. Uh, you imagine, mm-hmm. assuming it's going to follow some form of you know traditional origin story mm-hmm. stuff, that he will end up also learning from the card. But yeah, uh, maybe they'll swerve us. So yeah, maybe mm-hmm. they'll swerve us and spin out of that. But uh, while while this is being unconventional, I don't think it's being that flagrantly just throwing stuff out for the yeah, sake of it. Because that yeah. would be just throwing it out for the sake of it. Yeah, it's not trying to completely contradict everything. It's just trying to add its own spin on things. Yeah, this is a unique take, but it, it doesn't necessarily... There's a version of continuity where so far this could kind of work, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, my, my feelings on this are pretty similar to the first issue overall in the sense that I think it's well enough put together. I, I like the voice mostly for Bruce, and I think it's a, a nice, pleasant read. I'm still not convinced I need another sort of part of the origin like this sort of embellished, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I'm not, it's not convinced me yet it needs to exist, and it may, it may never do that, and that may be okay, but uh, it does feel a bit superfluous in that sense, but... Yeah, I get that. I've kind of... Person, I've kind of just like compartmentalized that and go, okay, this doesn't need to exist, but as long as it's good, I'm just going to enjoy it. Yeah. And so far, you know. That, that, I mean, that gets me so far, but there's always just that lingering feeling of like, I don't mean anybody doing this again or doing a version of this. You know, there's always that part of me still there. So, I mean, that, that kind of is the biggest thing going against it. Uh, yeah. But, you know, I mean, how did you feel about it, Matt? I, a lot of the same things, but at least I like what I'm reading. It doesn't like this issue, especially it moved. Um, so, but I, I like a lot of the voice of the characters too. Cause like when he first shows up to talk with uh, uh, the thief lady, um, she's like, how'd you know? It's like, well, it's like being followed by a bull. Uh, and then um, she says, oh yeah, I'll, I'll teach you and you're, you're, you know, thundering hooves. Something along those lines, and yeah, there's which, just a lot of which is a nice reference for her to bring up because she actually does if effectively Batman out the scene the night before. Yeah. Like you know, she disappears and he's like, right. "How did she do that?" Which is funny right. because that's what he does to everyone uh, right. when he's Batman. And so, 
with with the card showing up at the end, it's you know, like you guys said, they they probably stole something that belonged to the killer, and he's tracked it to them. Um, you know, now he's going to learn the flip side of of the detective. You know, he's learned from the thief. Now he's going to learn from Ducard. Yeah. So. Um, Whereas after the last issue, we weren't even sure how much of a time jump right. it was going to be because of like how right. individual it felt. This feels right. like the next issue has to pick up pretty much where it leaves off. More or less exactly, yeah. yeah. Right. So yeah. You could do a little bit and like, just flash back to this yeah, moment yeah. if you wanted to, but I, I don't think it can go too extreme. So... Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, we'll see how it goes. Uh, uh, Matt, what are you giving it? Um, maybe the seven point five. Okay, Connor. Um, uh, I'll go with an eight point five. I, I really enjoyed this, and I really like the art. Yeah, uh, old Gia Domenico's got his his spin on things. Um, I, I. Th- I think I'm going to agree with Matt Mole and Connor here with the number. Um, mm. And not put a 4.5 is excellent, I just typed. Uh, 7.5. Uh, because, like I say, there's just this like feeling of, like, I don't know if we need to be doing this. I'm not sure what makes this worthwhile yet, necessarily. Mm-hmm. Other than just being kind of good. <laughs> Maybe it's enough, but... That, that, that's, for me, is enough. But I get why it's not worth yeah. it.